Hello and welcome. Today we will look at the lily blanket pattern. So if this is of your first time, thank you very much for stopping by. My name is Mirka and I make stitch and pattern crochet and Tunisian crochet tutorials. If this is of your interest, please consider subscribing, like this video and sharing with your friends. So without further ado, let's dive in. Lily blanket, you will need some sheep cheese chunky monkey, which is bulky weight yarn. You will need 6.5 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook or for this project you can actually use a normal crochet hook as long as there is nothing in the middle. This Tunisian crochet pattern resembles or mimics the gingham uh, pattern, a fabric pattern. So while well, in the other pro project you would need three colors which is one neutral, white, one that is between the neutral and the dark and for this project you actually only need two colors because as we create the squares um, the square which is meant to be the middle color the middle um, intensity color will be done using the light and the dark color so as you can see this will be done by using color work where we change the yarn on forward and a return pass another benefit of this pattern is that uh, we are working in panels so we are working in panels in sections and we join them as we go so you will not have to have multiple balls of yarn rather attached and work the whole blanket as at as, as one piece you will work in these columns that you will join as you go so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you a few squares and how to join the columns together i will not be working on the exact the same size I will work on a miniature version uh, so that I will demonstrate or show you the principles of the basic and techniques and stitches that we are going to be using so that you, you can then follow the pattern easily and you can make the actual size or even you can adjust the size of the project as you first uh, we are beginning from uh, this square in uh, the stone in stone so according to pattern you would chain 20 I'm going to chain less So I'm going to start with six for my small swatch. So you will start with a slip knot. You'll place it on the hook and chain six. So chain, we will yarn over and pull through the loop already on the hook. So that's chain one, two, three, four five and and six we then turn around and we are going to work the fo the uh, forward pass of the row number one into the back bumps of your chain stitches so you will place the hook from front to back yarn over pull up a loop and you will repeat this for each of these Okay, all the way so you had six chains now we've got six loops on the hook so each loop corresponds to one chain and each loop counts as a one stitch so that was forward pass for row number one now we're going to go on to the return pass so we yarn over pull through one that's also known as a chain one yarn over pull through two and we will repeat yarn over pull through two for the rest of the return pass until we get back to the beginning okay so that was row number one i will uh, work only four rows but according to pattern you will work rows number one to rows number 16 in the solid color so uh, the whole pattern is worked in tunisian simple stitch which is easy so Tunisian simple stitch is worked by inserting the hook from right to left under the front vertical bar yarn over pull up a loop and we will repeat this now once we get to the end of the row we work at the end stitch which is slightly different so while uh, the stitches or the Tunisian simple stitches in this row we worked under 
one uh, bar or one um, strand of yarn the last end stitch will work will be worked under two so if you turn the end of the project towards yourself you will see that there are two strands of yarn or two sides of the stitch which is one on the right one on the left so you will place hook and your hook and both of these yarn over and pull up a loop okay my yarn split a little bit okay like so so this is the end stitch again we've got six stitches on the hook that means we haven't dropped any stitch so now we are going to work the return pass as per row number one yarn over pull through one and yarn over pull through two like so so again i'm going to work two more rows and then i will show you how to change your how to work the colored section so this is row number three get some more yarn and row number okay so i've got my a mini square done this was row number one to four for you the solid section will be row number one to row number six so now we are going to get onto this section here where we work different uh color yarn or on the forward pass and then we join the second color on the return pass work the following forward pass in the uh, second color and the return pass in the first color and we will alternate this for the whole of the second square so as per pattern the second color for me is petrol so we will still work the forward pass of row number five that's row number five for me. For you, this will be row number 17. We insert the hook of a spare end, end stitch. We drop color A. We bring color B. So this is where we're going to change where we go into the last end stitch. Okay. And then we will work standard return pass yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two work all the way okay there you go so now we are going to again work forward pass in our second color or color b until we get to the end stitch we insert the hook as for end stitch drop color b pick up color a yarn over and pull through one with then yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two for the third row of the color work we are working forward pass in our color a insert into the last stitch as for end stitch we drop color a bring color b yarn there we chain one yarn over pull through two okay so that's the third row of the color work we are working forward past this is the, the fourth row now forward pass in color b So we will work the fourth row of the color work section of all the color work square in color A. And this brings us to the next section, our blanket. We are now finishing this square. We are going back to solid square in first color, color A. We work the return pass of the row number four of the color work in our color A. This bring, 
this broader color add to the beginning so we again we don't have to cut the yarn join and rejoin we are just continuing with color a like so working end stitch and now you've got two options here if you uh, don't like to carry your yarn at the end of your project you can cut color b however if you don't mind carry over the yarn you just wrap the yarn around or you will carry the yarn in the second color up a row you will continue this through the uh, solid section after every row you wrap around you bring the yarn up so that when you need to work the next color work section it will be very conveniently ready for, for you there so this for me i would then chain one pull through one and yarn over pull through two okay so this is the first column so you will then continue again four rows for me it would be four rows in color a for you it would be another 16 rows in color a so according to the pattern this would be rows number 33 to 48 okay so just to recap on the first column you start in color a according to pattern you will work rows number one to row number 16 in solid color so you will work in color a and then from row number 17 to row number 32 you will alternate the color on the return pass and then from row number 33 to row number 48 you will repeat row number two which is basically working the solid section and then you will alternate the solid section with the color section for the length of your project okay so i'm going to finish this um, small section and i will show you how to bind off on the work all the squares per one column we are now going to bind off the top of the column so we will use tunisian simple stitch bind off so we are going to go into the next stitch as for tunisian simple stitch yarn over pull up a loop and we pull through the loop that is already on the hook like so and we repeat this for all the stitches in the row including the end stitch once you get to the end you can cut your yarn and pull it through we're going to sh i'm going to show you how to work the second column and how to join the column so you will work each column from bottom to top then you will join one on the right hand side and you will work that from bottom to top so the first we need to attach the yarn so we are going to attach it through um the onto the chain the rows of chain that we started with which are here at the bottom so we will need to locate the edge chain which is here and we will insert the hook from the so each stitch has got three loops this is the front loop this is the back loop and then there is one more here right here at the back here so this is the back loop front sorry front back and the bottom loop here so we are going to insert the hook from the back and the the one right at the end we join our color and according to pattern you will chain 22 just to fit or match my project i've started mini swatch i'm going to be working eight so it needs to be two more than um the width of the first square so the first square was 20 chains wide so the second one you will need to chain for the second one 22 for me the first one was six so i need to chain eight one two three four five six seven and eight you will then turn this um and work into the back bumps of the chain stitches similarly as we've done for the first square until you get to the chain that joined onto the first column
okay so now we've got the joining chain and we are going to skip this one not going to work into this one just make sure that it's nice and tight and we will be joining onto the side of the project here so again we are going to be working into the back and the bottom uh, loop of the of the um, an edge stitch okay so you've got here is the front loop here is the back loop and then you've got this extra loop here at the end so we will work through the back and the bottom loop there yarn over pull through now so we've got now two four six eight stitches and from column number two all your return passes will be yarn over pull through two all the way so on the first section we worked yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two all the way now eight loops on our hook so on this section we will be alternating um, the two colors on the forward and return pass so now we are going into onto the return pass And we will start the return pass with color B. Place the loop on the hook and pull through two. And we will continue yarn over pull through two all the way. Like so. We can tighten up this um, join by pulling the color A slightly. So we'll then continue working Tunisian simple stitches and two stitches below, like so. And joining onto the edge stitch of the previous column. Again, we are working through the back and the bottom loops, like so. You drop the color, pick up color B, you do yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two all the way. You will then work your forward pass with color B. Work in Tunisian simple stitch into each of these stitches join onto the other column joining stitch you will then get your color a back work the return pass in color a work your forward pass in color a Tunisian simple stitch into each stitch. Pick up color B. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way. So I worked four rows alternating color B with color A. Now I'm going to get to the solid section in color B. As you can see, working the last return pass in color B brought the strand of yarn right to the beginning so I'm going to then work um, the next square or the next section in solid in color B and then I will work the third square where I will again alternate the color B with the color A and I'll meet you at the end when I will be binding off and I'll show you how to join the bind off of the second column onto the bind off of the first so welcome back as you can see i'm the top i'm on the top of the second column so i'm about to bind it off so as previously we are going to do the tunisian simple stitch bind off working into the stitch s for tunisian simple stitch 
pulling through the loop that is already on the hook like so so bind of the last stitch and then we are going to go under the two loops of the previous stitch so the first stitch that we bind off we're going to go under there like so we will then cut the yarn pull it through and as you can see this will join onto the stitch on the top and then you can weave in ends and it looks virtually seamless so you've got the nice neat edge on the top so you will then continue working more columns on the right hand side you will be joining them as i showed you how we joined the column number two so if you now start working the third column the first section would be solid the section would be alternating color the third section or the third square will be solid and so on all the way to the top of the blanket joining again onto the the back and the bottom loop and this tutorial helpful um, i'm looking forward to your lily blankets let me know what colors would you use for yours and i'm looking forward to see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe like and share bye bye